Okay, somebody's being really cute. Hey, Kenny. He's extremely relaxed, as you can tell by his pose. And I think this would be an example, you know, to us all that we should aspire to this state of relaxation. <laughs> On that note, let's get to reading the Bible, because that's what we're doing, reading the Bible together, together. Exodus, oh, sorry, I'm holding the camera because I don't know what else to do. I can't set it down. I'm on Exodus, oh wait, hold on. I'm going to read from this other translation. Exodus. Turning pages. Exodus. Okay, so we're on Exodus 25, and I'm going to read from this, uh, the Jewish Bible, Tanakh, the Holy Scriptures, the New JPS translation, according to the traditional Hebrew text. Of course, it's the Bible. It's what we call the Bible. Okay. So Exodus 25, there you go. don't mean to wobble the camera so much. The Lord, I hope, and sorry, pardon my interruption. I just hope he doesn't get up because it's too cute, honey. We need you being cute right now. Okay, Exodus 25. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Tell the Israelite people to bring me gifts. He shall accept gifts for me from every person whose heart so moves him. And these are the gifts that you shall accept from them. Gold, silver, and copper. Blue, purple, and crimson yarns. Fine linen. Goat's hair. Tanned ramskins. Dolphin skins and acacia wood, oil for lighting, spices, sorry, take two, <laughs> I messed up that verse, verse six, oil for lighting, spices for the anointing oil, and for the aromatic incense, lapis lazuli, and other stones for setting, for the ephod, and for the breast piece. And let them make me a sanctuary, that I may dwell among them, exactly as I show you. The pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furnishings, so shall you make it. They shall make an ark of acacia wood, two and a half cubits long, a cubit and a half wide, and a cubit and a half high. Overlay it with pure gold, overlay it inside and out, and make upon it a gold molding around about. Cast four gold rings for it to be attached to its four feet, two rings on one of its side walls and two on the other. Make poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Then insert the poles into the rings on the side walls of the ark for carrying the ark. The poles shall remain in the rings of the ark. They shall not be removed from it. And deposit in the ark the tablet of the pact, which I will give you. You shall make a cover of pure gold, two and a half cubits long and a cubit and a half wide. Make two cheru cherubim. <laughs> Why can't I say that word? Take three. I have said this word many, that is me talking, not the Bible. I've said this word many times. Why can't I say it? Sometimes I have a mental block. Okay. Take 105. Um, okay, where was I? Uh, make two cher cherub. Why can't I? I'm totally stumbling over this word. 
I can't say it. It's the plural of cherubs. Make two cherubim of gold. Make them of hammered wood at the two ends of the cover. Make one cherub at one I dropped the Bible, people. I dropped the Bible. Sorry, honey. Oh, no. Okay. Let's have a little intermission as we... Uh, maybe I should stop there. <laughs> Hold on. Um, okay. Take 106. to where we were. Oh. Flipping pages, flipping pages. I'm determined. Okay, let's go back to it. Let me try this again. <sighs> Verse 19. Make one cherub at one end and the other cherub at the other end of one piece with the cover shall you make the cherubim, cherubim at its two ends the cherubim shall have their wings spread out above shielding the cover with their wings they shall confront each other uh oh somebody's getting up to leave that's not the Bible, it's me talking. Okay. Okay, verse 20 again. The, the cherubim shall have their wings spread out above, shielding the cover with their wings. They shall confront each other. The faces of the cherubim being turned toward the cover. Place the cover on top of the ark after depositing inside the ark the pact that I will give you. There I will meet with you, and I will impart to you from above the cover from between the two cherubim that are on top of the ark of the pact, all that I will command you concerning the Israelite people. Okay, let's stop there at verse 24, and, um, and we'll pick up. On, on that tomorrow, um, interesting as, you know, God is giving instructions on, you know, how to build the, um, the Ark of the Covenant and the Tabernacle, I guess. Uh, very specific instructions, and um, I'm always fascinated by the mention of the, the cherubim which I couldn't pronounce for a while, <laughs> or the cherubs, which they're of um, an angelic order and um, very interesting. Elsewhere in the Bible talks about, um, you know, angels and describes them, and specifically in the book of Ezekiel and in the book of Revelation, and I think Isaiah. But we'll get there. By the way, when we get to the book of Ezekiel specifically, which will be who knows when, but um, specifically chapter um, 16, verse 6, I will share my testimony because it's kind of related to that verse. Um, so, God willing and the rivers don't rise, that will happen. All right, well, let's go to Luke now. And I'm gonna read from this uh, groovy book, The Living New Testament, and it's called Reach Out. And I think that must have been published in the 60s, but here we are in the 21st century. Okay, let's go to Luke. Oh, look, they even have um, 
in this Bible, they have like a whole section on how to make a car. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, but there you have it. But we're going to read from it. Luke. Where are you, Luke? Matthew, Mark. Over here. Oh, what else do they have? Look. It says, don't look too closely. And it's a picture of Manhattan. Hmm. Okay, well, maybe we'll read that down the line. Wait, there's a picture of... A couple of teenagers from the 60s. Well, let's go to Luke. Sorry, I'm taking a long time. Okay, Luke. We are now Luke. Luke 24. I'm sorry, we're Luke 13. I went, I jumped way ahead. If you're still listening, God bless you. Okay, Luke 13, and I think we're picking up at verse 24. Guster's going to move in pretty soon on his brother and cuddle. Are you going to cuddle, Guster? We'll see. Okay, Luke 14, verses 25 through 35. Great crowds were following him. He turned around and addressed them as follows. Anyone who wants to be my follower must love me far more than he does his own father, mother, wife, children, brothers, or sisters, yes, more than his own life. Otherwise, he cannot be my disciple. And no one can be my disciple who does not carry his own cross and follow me. But don't begin until you count the cost. For who would begin to construction of a building without first getting estimates and then checking to see if he has enough money to pay the bills? Otherwise, he might complete only the foundation before running out of funds, and then how everyone would laugh. See that fellow there? They would mock. He started that building and ran out of money before it was finished. Or what king would ever dream of going to war without first sitting down with his counselors and discussing whether his army of 10,000 is strong enough to defeat the 20,000 men who are marching against him. If the decision is negative, then while the enemy troops are still far away, he will send a truce team to discuss terms of peace. So no one can become my disciple unless he first sits down and counts his blessings and then renounces them all for me. What good is salt that has lost its saltiness? Flavorless salt is fit for nothing, not even for fertilizer. It is worthless and must be thrown out. Listen well if you would understand my meaning. Okay, well, that's the end of Luke 14, and um, I mean, that's more strong words. It's, um, it's, it's, it's tough, <laughs> because he's like, I don't know, it's hard, he's, he's saying, you can't be his disciple unless you love him more than 
your father, mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, more than your own life. And, um, yeah, I don't know, that kind of instills fear in me a little bit. And then also, you have to take up your cross and count the cost. It's not easy. And that's, I'm someone who, there, I don't think anybody likes suffering, but there are some people more than others who really detest it. And I'm one of those people. So carrying my cross, it really holds no appeal to me. But of course, Jesus does and heaven does and truth does but I really don't suffer well. I don't know. Those are, those are strong words, um, but it is the truth. You know, I mean, he is God. He is the one who made everything. This kitty, he made this kitty. <laughs> he made me. And he made you. And... It, it would be only natural to love him more than anything else. But, you know, as, as we're talking about this, there's another scripture that comes to mind that kind of offers me some comfort um, that we love him. I forget where it is, but the verse is, maybe I'll look for it and then I'll put it in the description below, but... The verse is, you know, we love him because he first loved us. And of course, it's obvious that he loves us more than we could ever love him because he's God. And elsewhere in scripture, it says that God is love. So that's comforting. And he also, elsewhere in scripture, it says that he loved us while we were yet enemies. Anyway, well, maybe we should close in a prayer. All right. Lord, um, help me. <laughs> As I read your word, I'm confronted with the truth of your word, which is sometimes very convicting. And to be honest, sometimes it instills fear. So I know that's not of you. Fear like that is not of you. And it's my own insecurity. But help me to... feel secure in you and help anyone and everyone who listens to feel secure in you too. All right. Thank you, Lord. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. But, oh, here comes Guster. Let's see who you think. What? Oh, he wants to give me a hug. Okay. All right. Bye, everyone.